Someone who follows Chris named Proto Man has compiled a document full of evidence that Chris does not really believe in the dimensional merge. He tweets it out often enough on his Twitter account at milk underscore cookies 16, but just in case you don't want to read all 19 pages, I figured that I would do a reading of it for you. These are not my words and do not conform to my own opinions. They are Proto Man's words. I am merely reporting on it. The evidence. I am going to prove that Christine doesn't believe in the merge, and that the merge doesn't exist. Just as a heads up though, I am not going to attack Christine in any way. That means I won't be insulting her, deeming her, that's probably supposed to be demeaning, or looking down on her. I'm only looking at the merge objectively. Now, I am Christine's friend, and I'm going to respect her like all my other friends, but just like my other friends, I'm not going to lie to her either. Which means, while presenting my evidence, I may come off as harsh at times. If Christine doesn't actually respond to this, then she would prove that she doesn't believe in the merge and she's fabricated the whole ideology. When I mean respond, I mean explain why I'm wrong with examples and evidence. For instance, Mewtwo stated that I took statements out of context. If that's true, Christine should be able to prove how I took these statements out of context. If Christine can prove that I'm wrong about my points, not only will I believe in the merge, but others will as well, since she will be equipped to deal with similar questions that I'm asking. Then the merge will happen quicker, as Christine has stated in the past. I know that Christine doesn't like when we bring up her past, whether it be recent past or not, but I'll state this. Christine looks at trolls as bad people because of their actions in the past. If she can judge people for their actions in the past, surely she can be judged for her actions in the past. I would like to apologize to Christine, Sonichu, Magichan, and Mewtwo. I'm sorry if I will come off as rude or hateful in this document. Also, I forgive Mewtwo for threatening me. There are two claims to prove my position. The vagueness of the merge and the contradictions of the merge. Vagueness. When Christine talks about Sonichu lore, she's very detailed. When she talks about the merge, she's very vague. Given what the merge is and what it implies, she should have tons of details. Let me give you some examples. The date of the merge as of now is unknown. There have been a few times that Christine has declared that the merge would happen at a particular date, but it didn't. According to Christine, there are a lot of factors contributing to when the merge will happen, although she never specified what those parameters might be. Finding these parameters should be an easy task. Since Christine said that most fictional characters exist in C-197, that means it is very possible for them to find out the date of the merge by using time-traveling devices, such as the DeLorean, the TARDIS, the Time Stone, Marvel Universe, the Time Stones, Sonic CD, etc. She could jump into the future to not only find out the date at which the merge takes place, but also how to make the merge go faster. Because of the merge not happening on a few occasions, Christine has given some reasons of why it did not happen when she stated. At first, she mentioned it was due to red tape. Quote, The Dimension merge of C-197 and Hour 1218 is still in progress. There is more red tape to work through, but our goal is still set. It is only delayed. Chris's Twitter account. We aren't sure what this red tape is or how it is hindering the merge. The next reason she gave was that the Iron Curtain was blocking the two dimensions from merging. The Iron Curtain was a concept mentioned by Jacob Sockness since him and Christine were in contact at the time. The Iron Curtain could be the red tape Christine was referring to earlier, but it is strange that she had to find out about it through Jacob, and not through her contacts in C-197. Another reason she gave was due to there not being any magic in 1218. We are not sure why magic would be needed for merging different dimensions, or how to increase said magic. Christine tried to increase the magic in this dimension several times, but with no success. Throughout all of this, Christine has never caused the merge to happen quicker. You could argue that her meditating is causing the merge to happen quicker, but from my perspective, there is no way to verify that. Christine might claim that certain events happening are signs of the merge, but that claim is easily refuted, which will be covered throughout the rest of this paper. 
Christine has claimed that as a goddess, she has several duties to perform. Quote, Even being a deity, myself, seeing all of these kinds of things having to play out for the future benefits amongst my other responsibilities and duties, it is quite rough and tough on me as well. Chris's Twitter. I and many others have questioned her on what these duties are. There has been no response from Christine on this subject matter at this time. Contradictions There are a lot of contradictions in the Merge philosophy. According to Christine, she knows there are contradictions. Quote, It is all very much true, conflicting as some of the statements may be. Chris's Twitter However, I think Christine is ignoring the amount of contradictions there are and how they affect the foundation and believability of the Merge. Body Swapping Body swapping has been a part of the Merge philosophy for a while. Christine claims at particular times that she was possessed by different character, such as Magichan or Sonichu. I can refute this claim by presenting two arguments. One, these characters speak the same way as Christine. Two, these characters act like Christine. One, Christine often makes several grammatical mistakes when she types, run-on sentences, comma splices, misusing adjectives, adverbs, etc., Sanachu and Majachan make those exact same mistakes in their writing. They also use words that mean the same thing to describe something just like Christine. For example, they'll say, I grew up and lived, or I understood and learned. Now, if Sanachu, Majachan, and Christine were different people, why would they make the same grammatical mistakes? You could argue it's because they are in Christine's body and muscle memory determines how they speak but understanding the English language and its various grammar rules has nothing to do with muscle memory. In videos, Sanachu and Magichan have the exact same vocal range as Christine. In the first recorded statement of Magichan Sanachu, Christine's natural tone of voice is definitely higher than Magichan. However, Christine does have range in her voice, and there have been videos of her speaking in a deeper voice, even deeper than the Magichan voice, like in the Christian Crashes Into Slumber video. Certain words like today, to, pattern, and behind are all set in Chris's notable twang inherited from his father and mother. One thing that isn't different, which should be, is Magichan's vocabulary. Magichan seems to have an identical vocabulary to Christine, and doesn't use any words that Christine might not know. You can see this exact same phenomenon in the live pre-birthday reading of SNT vs. Sonichu Part 2 video. In this video, Christine contradicts herself concerning Magichan's voice by saying that it would sound like Samurai Jack's voice. She also gets possessed by Sonichu briefly, but Sonichu sounds no different to Christine. 2. The behavior between Sonichu, Magichan, and Christine are extremely similar. When questioned about the merge, they either don't respond, just like Christine, or they give vague answers, just like Christine. Magichan in particular draws exactly like Christine does. Christine has actually addressed this claim, stating that the reason why they draw the same is due to muscle memory. However, this leads to one possible conclusion. The first conclusion would be that Magichan isn't strong enough to override Christine's muscle memory. This doesn't really make a lot of sense because Magichan is supposed to be stronger than Christine in terms of psychic abilities. Additionally, even if Magichan wasn't strong enough to override Christine's muscle memory, it still doesn't explain why Magichan colors in the exact same ways as Christine. You could argue that Magichan's coloring is the same as a result of muscle memory, too. But that has nothing to do with coloring. When a person makes a drawing and colors it, they color differently based on the image they're coloring. Magichan and Christine's coloring both have no structure. Even how Christine, Sonichu, and Magichan deal with the trolls are the same. Recently, Sonichu responded to this video. The video in question is of Sonichu running over an innocent civilian. The person who tweeted it said, Poor Rue was victim to a hit and run by Sonichu. Care to explain, Chris? Chris responded, That was very cruel of you to depict that at all. I would never, ever hit someone. This post is clearly baiting Christine and Sonichu, but Sonichu falls for it by giving the troll attention. Both Sonichu and Magichan has fallen for bait exactly like this in the past. It's the same trope of someone depicting one of Christine's characters doing something uncharacteristically bad. You can see the same behavior when Sonichu was asked about Barb in the Team Fortress 2 Analysis Anarchy Red vs. Blue Part 2 Reaction video. At 325. 
It is possible to say that some people asking about Barb's health actually care about her well-being. Is it fair to say that some people asking questions about Barb's health actually care about her well-being? Of course, but I think most people asking this question are trolling. In the same video, Sonichu states that he does not know how to organize his streaming layout to show him and the video at the same time, just like Christine. He also states that he didn't take time to learn how to do it beforehand, just like Christine. Magichan and Sonichu even block people for the same exact reason as Christine. Magichan posted this on September 4th, 2019. Quote, I remember when Christine helped out these mechanical experts a few years ago with a few simple and kind drawings. They are progressing well in their technology. Purple heart, high voltage sign. A user pointed out that, quote, She didn't help them. She's not mechanical, electrical, or computer engineer. She's not a computer scientist. She's not a project manager. She's not even a concept artist, because in order to be a concept artist, your concept has to be grounded in reality. Essentially, Christine didn't have the necessary skill to help them, which isn't wrong. Some might say that Christine could be a concept artist, as she already has drawing experience. In order to be a concept artist, especially for a robotics company, you have to have an understanding of what is possible to create given the current technology and a decent understanding of electronics. Christine has neither of these. So Magichan blocked this person for stating something that was true. Christine also blocks people for stating something that is true. John. Wait, Gotham can't be merged because it's not in C-197. Remember you said that the Twin Towers exist in C-197 and the towers don't exist in DC Comics or the DC movies. Chris. Gotham is in C-197, and that is why the Twin Towers were fated to fall in 2001. They were fallen there too, long ago before then. John. I don't think you understand. The Twin Towers don't and have never existed in the DC Comics or movies, but they exist in C-197. It's not that they fell in the DC Comics or movies, it's just that they were never built to begin with. Chris. They were never chronicled properly. Strike three. John. DC has been chronicling events since the early 1900s. I think they have the credibility to know what things are in their dimension. In the 90s, Marvel and DC both confirmed they were in separate dimensions in the, the Amalgam comics. Christine was talking to this individual about a flaw in the merge. When she acknowledged that she was wrong, she blocked that individual, essentially blocking someone for stating something that is true. Additionally, I was almost blocked for saying that Christine didn't actually believe in the merge, and I have evidence to prove it. Magichan being visible and tangible in 1218. Before Magichan swapped bodies with Christine, he stated that he was visible and tangible in 1218. Quote, to everyone, I am pleased to announce that my body is fully visible and tangible here in this dimension 1218, and Christine remains most safe and well. She is returned with Mewtwo from California, and I shall be switching us back into our original bodies shortly. There were and are no pictures of Magichan in 1218 at this time. If Magichan was truly visible or tangible in 1218, someone would have taken a picture of him, or he would have taken a picture of himself. The pictures we do have of Magichan are pictures of 1218, and Magichan is drawn on top of the picture. On September 26, 2019, Christine posted this picture, and stated the following. Ooh, there's someone special photobombing in this video. For the record, the camera tends to add on animated flair. Magichan is more realistic in person. Timecode, 3210. Let's talk about how a camera works. When taking a picture, a camera will use a light sensor to measure the amount of light in the environment, and a laser to measure the distance of the object in front of the camera. The shutter is then adjusted to limit the amount of light, and a motor is used to focus the lens. Then a picture is taken and processed using various hardware and software. You could argue that during that process, a filter could have been applied on Magichan to make him look like a cartoon. We can see in the image and video that there is no filter being used. Even if there was a filter being used, such as a face filter like the one seen on Snapchat, those filters are calibrated to see human faces only, not anthropomorphic sonichus. Christine mentioned something called an animated flare, which causes Magichan to look like a cartoon. We've discussed that the image doesn't have a flare on it, so we have to explore the idea of this animated flare. Lens flares happen due to non-image light, the sun, reflecting internally on lens elements a number of times before finally reaching the digital sensor. I've done extensive research to find out what this animated flare is, but I found nothing. Christine never detailed how an animated flare works, but given how a camera works, it shouldn't be behaving in the way it behaves in this image. 
If this really were a flare, it would be affecting an Y as well as the background. Also, there are no image artifacts around Magichan, almost as if he's been pasted in from another program. I'll be clear here. This is definitely a drawing of Magichan made in MS Paint and pasted on top of the picture of Anne Wise's podcast. If you go to the video linked, Magichan is not there. Even if you slow down the video to 0.25 speed, he's still not there. Even if you download the video and slow it down so that the video plays at one frame per second, he is still not there. Magichan is nowhere to be seen in any part of this video. And Wei even responded to this post saying, quote, thank you. I asked you for evidence, and you just gave me evidence. Now, everybody knows you are pretending about the existence of Magichan, and not imagining him, because you had to draw him into these screenshots, assuming you have even taken them yourself, unless you enlisted the help of someone else to take these screenshots. But even then, now everybody, including yourself, can just go to the video and see for themselves that there is no Magichan there. Again, thank you. Magichan has also stated, I am continuing to meet and interact with all of you face-to-face -face and in person. I still have many lives to make a difference for, and with here in this dimension. Everyone who has seen me and talked with me knows who they are, and some of them are even on the Kiwi Farms. I will be gracing Noel's presence as well within the next few days. To this day, Noel has never confirmed that he has been visited by Magichan. The events caused by the merge. Christina stated that certain events happening are proof of the merge. To put it shortly, she has no evidence that any of these events are linked to the merge. However, I do have proof that every one of these events aren't linked to the merge. Notre Dame Cathedral Burning On April 15, 2019, the Notre Dame Paris Cathedral caught fire. Christine claims that Pokemon were responsible for the fire. The problem with this claim is that there are no pictures or videos confirming that there was a Pokemon near the cathedral. Fires in California Christine briefly mentioned that the fires in California are to make place for the merge. Christine has no proof that these are for the merge. But if they really were, it was a pretty silly effort as there are several initiatives to replant the trees that were lost during those fires. Some organizations that are leading these initiatives are One Tree Planted and the National Forest Foundation. So the fires would be essentially useless. COVID-19 According to Christine, COVID-19 happened to, quote, sort out the weak from the moderate and strong of mental and soulful intervals. Mewtwo further expanded on this idea by stating they were, quote, sacrificing a number of lives in 1218 so they can continue living on in the bodies of their self-counterparts in C197, and the few of vice versa. Looking at the virus a little closer, COVID-19 is evidence of the merge not happening because Christine could not predict COVID-19. Because Christine could not predict the COVID-19 outbreak happening, that must mean it is not related to the merge. Rainbow and Lightning In Oklahoma, a rainbow and lightning bolts were seen at the same time on April 30th. Christine claims that it was her doing, but once again, there is no evidence. This rainbow and lightning in the sky has been happening for centuries, long before Christine was born. Additionally, they are random, so one of these occurrences happening now has no significance. Essentially, her lack of evidence is my evidence. Now, you could argue that we should be able to take her word for it, However, there have been several times that Christine has been wrong about merge events that will make people cautious to just take her word for it. On December 6, 2019, Courtney, aka Project SNT, released another redesign video. She decided to redesign the chaotic combo since she had already redesigned Sonichu and Rosechu. When Christine saw the video, she was triggered by it and publicly talked about her dislike of the designs. Quote, well, I did get epic triggered from Project SNT's poor redesign choices on four out of five of them. They actually are moreover separate individuals than redesigns, which does throw me off. The only exception is the punchy Sonichu redesign. The worst culprit being the wild Sonichu redesign. He needs his leaf for better gliding and flight than a large tail could ever do. And Sonichu ears are typically long. And yet, regardless of this, apparently there is something deeper than that that just sets off my subconscious worse. Now I know Christine is going to say that she wasn't triggered by the designs, but rather, she was being notified that the Dimensions CS-89, where Courtney's designs existed, was being attacked by the Rokat Empire. This isn't true. Christine apologized for calling her redesigns bad. Quote, I want to publicly announce that I am really sorry for how I reacted to Project SNT's redesigns here. They are very good. And so is her video. If she really was being notified that CS-89 was in danger, 
Her commenting on the appearances of the redesigns and not the status of the characters themselves doesn't make any sense. Christine gave no specific information on why she commented on the look of the redesigns first. Twin Towers in C-197 Christine stated some time ago that 9-11 didn't happen in C-197's New York. Quote, Ye, ah, 9-11 was not fun at all. Just a friendly reminder that this pictured event happened in New Milwaukee of C-197, and not in either dimension's New York City. At least New Milwaukee's tall buildings were empty. This always bothered me. There was something off about it. Christine stated that Marvel characters do live in C-197. Now, if you know anything about the Amalgam comics, you should know that the Marvel characters living in C-197 is incorrect. However, there is another piece of evidence to prove that Marvel characters aren't in C-197. In December 2001, Marvel released The Amazing Spider-Man Vol. 2, issue number 36. It was about 9-11 and how superheroes, specifically Spider-Man, were dealing with the aftermath of the attack. This book is canon to the Marvel Universe, which means that 9-11 did happen in the Marvel Universe. If Marvel characters really do live in C-197's Earth, that would mean that 9-11 happened in C-197's New York. You can't even use arguments that he was referring to the MCU, because the MCU heavily alludes to 9-11 happening. If Christine stated that 9-11 caused an alternative timeline, that would mean that every comic after December 2001 and every MCU movie would be in that alternative timeline. Someone brought this up to Christine, and after some conversation, she posted this. Quote, And I misspoke. The Twin Towers never existed in C-197, and with that, for the future merging of C-197, the Twin Towers fell here in 1218. Everything is happening today. My body, mind, and soul are really dedicated and busy today. Christine realized she was wrong and corrected herself. Granted, the correction was a full month afterward, and she did block the guy who brought up the contradictions. Communications with God I can prove that Christine has never talked to Jesus or God. In the Believe in the OCs and Deities video, Christine stated at 4.58 that she is, quote, unable to worship Jesus or any of the other deities, but I am friends with Jesus and all of the other deities, including the CPUs, so the least I could do is support them and be a friend. First, there are several scriptures in the Bible that state that there are no other gods. There is only one God. He has many names, Yahweh, El, I can't pronounce that, Emmanuel, etc. Quote, Beloved, do not believe every spirit, but test the spirits to see whether they are from God, for many false prophets have gone out into the world. John 4, 1. I am the Lord, and there is no other. Beside me there is no God. I equip you, though you do not know me. Isaiah 45, 5. You shall have no other gods before me. Exodus 23. Jesus said to him, I am the way, and the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. John 14.6. For false Christs and false prophets will arise and perform great signs and wonders, so as to lead astray, if possible, even the elect. Matthew 24.24. 24. Yet for us there is one God, the Father, from whom all things and for whom we exist. And one Lord, Jesus Christ, through whom all things and through whom we exist. Corinthians 8.6. And this is eternal life that they know you the only true God, and Jesus Christ, whom you have sent. John 17, 3. So if God did talk to Christine, he would have surely condemned her for calling herself a God. Christine may argue that God may have stated these things in the past, but God just changed and now accepts the other gods. There are scriptures in the Bible that state God's word is final. The entirety of your word is truth, and every one of your righteous judgments endures forever. Psalm 119, 160. Heaven and earth shall pass away, but my word shall not pass away. Matthew 24, 35. Christine may state that because she is a deity, she can change the Bible. The Bible refutes this claim. For I testify unto every man that heareth the words of the prophecy of this book. If any man shall add unto these things, God shall unto him the plagues that are written in this book. And if any man shall take away from the words of the book of this prophecy, God shall take away his part of the book. God shall take away his part out of the book of life, and out of the holy city, and from the things which are written in this book. Revelation 22, 18-19 Every word of God is pure. He is a shield unto them, that put their trust in him. Add thou not unto his words, 
lest he reprove thee, and thou be found a liar. Proverbs 35-6 Christine also states in a video that God is a woman. The Bible states several times that God's chosen pronouns are he, him, and he refers to himself several times as father. The Bible uses the word father 1,103 times, and most of these times are referring back to God. I can't show every single verse that calls God a father, but I will link to this list of every time father is referred to in the Bible, and you can look through it yourself. Christine might argue that this is only referring to the God of this dimension, and not the other dimensions. The Bible clearly states that there is one God, and that nothing can contain him, aka, he's infinitely big, meaning that if there are other dimensions out there, they are all talking to the same God. Great is our Lord, and abundant in power. His understanding is beyond measure. Psalm 147.5 But will God really dwell on earth? The heavens, even the highest heaven, cannot contain you. But how much less this temple I have built. Kings 8.27 Christine stated on June 13, 2019, that according to Jesus, the merge would be finished soon. Quote, Without further ado, I have a message from Jesus Christ himself to share with y'all. He has been working super tough on his part in the dimensional merge as well, along with his mother, Emmanuel, and the other deities. Jesus personally confirms that the dimensional merge is in the final steps, and shall be completed within the near coming days, still unable to offer a valid set date on that. Jesus is reaching out personally in all of his dimensions churches and enlightened spots, portals, and Pokestops gyms, as mostly marked on the Ingress and Pokemon Go maps, regardless of conquer factions or neutrality. Jesus has personally asked me to extend his reach in asking everyone to have faith and believe, not only in him, and all the other deities between dimensions, CPUs included in that, but to fully believe in yours and everyone else's created OCs, be they Marvel, DC, Disney, Nintendo, Sega, Xbox, Sony, unbranded and all else in between. If you are indeed a creator, or even a voice actor, with at least one OC linked to you even in the smallest ways, even as a fan, all you need to do is think and send a thought or kind feeling to as many OCs as you are aware and knowledge of. Do note that even Jesus Christ, the one and only, of this dimension and C-197's Earth and Related, are all the same Jesus Christ, and in addition to being your favorite all-time chronicled savior, in full existence and tangibility wherever he goes, Jesus Christ is an OC too. With all the evidence from the Bible, it is clear she is not talking to Jesus or God, which is why the merge didn't happen soon, as stated in the post. Jacoba is a threat? In the beginning, Christine stated that the merge needed to happen because of some threat. When Jacob entered Christine's life, she concluded that that threat was Jacoba. Now Jacob has his own lore about Jacoba and the planet that he lives on, Kitasuna. But from my understanding, Christine doesn't believe in most of that lore. Because of this, there are many questions about Kitasuna and how much of a threat Jacoba is. Does she have information on Jacoba's ships, such as the materials he used, weapons on board, size, are the ships capable of light speed? And if not light speed, how fast can his ships go? How many ships does he currently have? It seems like Jacoba is lying about how much power he really has, because if he really hated everyone on Earth, especially Christine, why hasn't he attacked yet? His planet is clearly more technologically advanced than us, and he can possess any evil person and kill all of us at any time. These are important questions that have gone unanswered. Additionally, we have nuclear weapons so powerful that we could technically destroy an entire planet. The idea that we need the merge to happen to defend us from an alien attack doesn't really make sense. It's not like we're helpless. Characters being in the same dimension Christine claims that most fictional characters exist in C-197. However, that is simply impossible. First off, Christine stated that we can create a fictional character and it will be real. Already, Christine's claim is false. Someone could easily create an OC that instantly destroys C-197. That's a very... That's a really basic argument, though. I'll go a little deeper. If every fictional character exists in C-197, plenty of those characters wouldn't exist or the backstories would be completely changed. We can use Spider-Man as an example. We know that Peter Parker became Spider-Man after being bit by a spider that was exposed to radiation. Christina stated that almost every version of a character would be in C-197. That would mean that there would be multiple Peter Parkers being bitten by spiders exposed to radiation. 1960s TV Spider-Man, 1980s TV Spider-Man, Spider-Man the Animated Series, any Spider-Man video games, etc. Throughout the years, Marvel have said that Peter Parker becoming Spider-Man was an extremely rare occurrence, one out of a trillion. 
the odds of every iteration of Peter Parker not only existing, but all becoming Spider-Man is impossible. You could argue that since people in 1218 created these stories, that every Peter Parker becoming Spider-Man is reasonable, which may be correct. But if you do go down that road of thinking, there is a major flaw. Like I said before, a spider became radioactive, causing Peter Parker to become Spider-Man. However, if you look at Spider-Man the Animated Series, they say that the same thing happened to Peter Parker with the same radiation technology. The show alluded that it didn't have this radiation technology until 1995, but the original Spider-Man comic and the 1960s TV series claim to have had this technology since the 60s. If we are to believe that these two versions of Spider-Man coexist, then we have to accept that there is a contradiction here, and that one of these versions is lying. Now, Christina stated that companies, such as Marvel, can mischronicle events. However, this argument doesn't hold up very well. I could easily say that Sonic Shoe doesn't exist because Sonic's world geography and countries and Pokemon's world geography and countries don't line up at all. Sonic's geography, Pokemon's geography. Now, someone could argue that every character does exist in C-197 and their backstories are radically different. It's just that most of the characters wouldn't be the primes or originals. They would be copies of the originals. The originals would be in their own separate dimensions. Christine has alluded to the originals being in C-197. Clearly, this is a major contradiction. Christine's powers. Christine has stated on several occasions that she has various powers and that they are improving. The main three powers she has talked about are 1. The ability to levitate objects 2. Having millions of volts flowing through her body 3. The ability to foresee the future 1. There have been several times Christine has attempted to show off her levitating powers. This was the first video. She states in that video, quote, You should groove on me moving my flash drive telekinetically to find belief. Rather, you like it or not. Also, the only appendage shaking in that video is my left hand, as it was holding the phone to record that. At first glance, it looks like there is some other force causing the flash drive to fall, but let us look a little closer. You can see that she moved her index finger forward, which caused the flash drive to slightly move forward and turn. You can also see that the flash drive is an extremely small base, making it very difficult to keep on Christine's finger. Any slight movement would cause it to fall, and no one's hand can stay perfectly still unless you are asleep. Here's the second video. You can clearly see her hand moving in this video. The force of gravity was greater than the friction coming from her hand and caused the rock to move. The next time Christine's power would be shown off is in the first recorded statement of Magician Sonichu video. Between 148 and 206, you can see that her hand, arm, and body are all moving. This movement causes the fidget cube to turn over, but the cube does not levitate in the video. It's noted that Magician states that Christine's powers are improving. But as I've shown, there has been no improvement. The main piece of evidence I can offer to her not having these powers is me being able to replicate each video without having any psychic powers of the sort. Replicating the first video. Replicating the second video. Replicating third video. Two. Christine has stated that she said, Electricity powers flowing through me more that so than any heavy freaking battery or thunderstorms a lot lately. So how do we prove Christine has this much electricity in her body? Hooking her up to a multimeter to see how many volts is going through her body will do the trick. The multimeter should read above 1 million volts, as Christine mentioned having thunderstorm-like electricity running through his body, and lightning bolts are usually 1 million volts each. If I'm correct, the multimeter will read between 10 and 100 millivolts, as the average neuron in the human brain contains 70 millivolts. A multimeter won't even pick up any volts at all, since we have so little electricity in our body compared to a smartphone or video game console. Just to note, 10,000 volts will kill a human. 3. Christine recently clarified how her foreseeing powers worked on the Leftover Tonight podcast at 1.20.53. She stated that she gets information on events as they get closer, sort of like focusing in on an object with a telescope. As time passes, New information would confirm previous information about said events. However, examining the past two years, Christine's powers haven't worked like that. Let's look at four times where Christine foresaw things. The first time Christine foresaw the merge would happen at a specific date was 2018. Christine stated that the merge would happen at the turn of the new year. Christine talked about it several times, 
However, she never stated that she was receiving contradictory evidence that the merge wouldn't happen at that date. Eventually, the time came and the merge didn't happen. Christine didn't take back her prediction until after the merge was supposed to happen. In 2019, Christine posted a picture of a knockoff 7-Eleven, which had the same name as a convenience store in a cartoon. Christine claimed that the merge was happening at that moment. There were no lead-up posts to that post, it just happened. Magichan even said what she was saying was true. Christine never stated that she got any contradictory information or evidence, and Christine also never explained why she thought the merge was happening at that moment. In October 2019, My Little Pony Generation 4 ended. Two months before that, Christine claimed she foresaw that there would be a 10th season of My Little Pony Generation 4. Christine then got more information and added on to the fact that it would be animated and the rest of the main six would become alicorns. Despite no information stating that Hasbro will be releasing another animated season of My Little Pony Gen 4, Christine claims that Hasbro will do it because she foresaw it. Hasbro eventually revealed that they would be releasing Friendship is Forever episodes, which are clip shows showing the various episodes that have been released throughout the years of the show. These episodes only have 3-5 to five minutes of original animation, leaving the remaining 17-19 to 19 minutes of clips from the show's past. These episodes do take place between the last episode of My Little Pony and the second to last episode of My Little Pony, meaning that they are part of Season 9. After this information was released, Sonichu stated that, quote, Hmm, actually, with consent from Mama, let me add a little further. More of Friendship is Magic, Delay of Gen 5, Falling of Go Pony, and this now in April. What Sonichu doesn't realize is that Christine was wrong about her previous prediction, saying that there would be more of the My Little Pony Friendship is Magic, and that My Little Pony Friendship is Magic would get three more seasons are two different things. Friendship is Forever isn't a tenth season, it's part of season nine. If you add up the amount of time original animation is on screen, it will probably equal the runtime of one episode, maybe two. Even if Christine meant to say that there would be more of My Little Pony Friendship is Magic, she wouldn't be foreseeing anything, because we've known for more than a year about the My Little Pony movie coming out in 2021. That movie will have all of the My Little Pony Friendship is Magic characters in it, and will be the last My Little Pony Friendship is Magic content that we get. The first case of the coronavirus was in November 2019 in China. Since that point, cases have only grown. Christine stated that she foresaw the virus. However, Christine never mentioned it before the virus started, and Christine didn't mention it until March 2020, when the virus was infecting a lot of people. Even then, Christine stated that a vaccine would be created in a week or two, and that the virus would blow over extremely soon. Well, it's been almost two months since Christine made that comment, and the virus still isn't over. Christine was also surprised that the BabsCon in 1218 was cancelled. But if Christine foresaw the virus, or even looked on the news, Christine wouldn't have been surprised. Every time Christine has foreseen anything really major, it has always been incorrect. Christine's foreseeing abilities seem to be a combination of bad predictions based on past events, or guessing, and her own desires. Other Claims Understanding Electricity Christine stated that the COVID-19 vaccine was developed using Blake's blood. She stated, quote, Okay, perhaps not concentrate, as much as it was focusing and getting it to stick to what we had sorted out from Blake's blood. Lightning is just the flow of electrons from one location to another. If the electrons stop moving, then it's not lightning anymore. Lightning can't stick to anything, including liquids, because it simply wouldn't be lightning anymore without moving. So what about the electrons not moving causes the virus to be destroyed? Ending My Little Pony Generation 4 due to greed. When the news about the new My Little Pony show, Pony Life, released, Christine did not like it. And this is another reason why Generation 4 gets delayed until 2025, and we get My Little Pony Friendships of Magic Season 14 before then, with Seasons 10 to 13 before then. I know you can hear us, and that you read these at Hasbro. Celestia has talked with you all. Don't be corporate greeds. They aren't corporate greeds. If Hasbro was greedy, they would have just continued the show, given how much money it makes them. Ending the show when they did just cut off a big revenue source for them. Additionally, they have to hire new voice actors, animators, and writers. All of that takes time and a lot of money. Way more money than it would be to just continue My Little Pony Friendship is Magic. Allies with Princesses and Heroes Christine stated that the princesses from My Little Pony and superheroes from both Marvel and DC support the merge and him. If we are to believe that these characters are exactly how they are depicted in media, Christine is not correct. Some of you may remember a DC and Marvel crossover event in the 90s, 
where Marvel and DC characters fought against each other to see which universe was the better universe and which one would die. An important detail to note during the event was that the Marvel and DC characters didn't want to fight against each other because they felt it wasn't fair for a universe to be destroyed because it wasn't deemed worthy enough. It's clear that they both want their universes to survive. If the dimensional merge were to happen as Christine has laid out, it would quite literally destroy the Earth. Firstly, assuming that the Marvel, DC, and My Little Pony Friendship as Magic Worlds have a similar population count to 1218's Earth, the Earth would have an extra 1.9 trillion pounds added to the planet from people alone, not accounting for man-made objects. This could possibly affect the orbit of the Earth, which could have drastic effects on the weather, as well as the positions of the Moon. Secondly, there would be a war after the merge due to the surplus of people and limited amount of food and resources. Assuming that Marvel and DC superheroes know all this, and the fact that many supervillains from both universes are extremely dangerous, Apocalypse, Thanos, Darkseid, why would they want the dimensional merge to happen? The answer, they wouldn't. They wouldn't want the merge to happen because it would kill billions, if not trillions, of innocent lives. What are one of the main duties of a monarch? To protect its country from foreign invaders. Equestria has been attacked by multiple villains already, such as Queen Chrysalis, the Storm King, Lord Tyrek, etc. Equestria has been able to hold its own for a while now, but with the dimensional merge, they would be helpless. They haven't had to deal with technology from 1218's Earth like machine guns, C4, or atomic bombs. Not to mention the crazy technology from the DC and Marvel universes. They would be outmatched, and if Princess Celestia and Luna truly knew about the things I've listed, they would be adamantly against the dimensional merge. Note, if the merge were to happen, there would be around 1.01 to 3.01 quadrillion people on Earth. Christine can't be the CPU of Commodore console because she's never had a Commodore console. One thing that keeps nagging at me while I watch Christine's dimensional merge announcement video is how she got her CPU powers. She states, And then a few years later, uh, the original Scarlet passed on her soul and memories had got into my Commodore console, and I absorbed them, and I was bestowed upon them. Now in 1218 and C197, Christine has a Commodore 64. You can see it in the background of some of his videos. Here's the thing. The Commodore 64 is a computer, not a console. And as far as I know, Christine does not have an Amiga CD32, Commodore Max, or any actual Commodore console. Since CPUs strictly represent home and handheld consoles, how is Christine able to absorb anything from the Commodore 64 since it wasn't a console? Knowing she was being trolled by the Idea Guys. Christine stated that she knew she was being trolled by the Idea Guys. Quote, And I have known that I was being trolled, but I play along because a greater good is fated to happen. If Christine knew she was being trolled, she wouldn't have given those guys $6,000. She could have easily said she didn't have the money and still played along with their trolling scheme. Conclusion I hope that Christine reads through this and really thinks about what I'm saying. Whatever happens after she reads this, I hope she knows that even though we disagree on this, we can still be friends. I mean, that's the whole point of My Little Pony Friendship is Magic, right? Despite others' differences in race, beliefs, etc., any creature can still be friends as long as they respect one another and are kind to each other. After reading this, I wrote down a list of the evidence that I personally had gathered to show why Chris definitely did not believe in the dimensional merge. For one, Chris claims that Magichan visited several real people when he was on Earth. Some of those real people were Kiwi Farms users, and yet those Kiwi Farm users have admitted that they do not actually see or talk to Magichan and instead are lying to Chris. This would mean, if Magichan were real, that he is lying to Chris about talking to these people. When Magichan speaks in the dialogues posted by Jacob Sockness, he uses Jacob's mannerisms, like calling the dimensional merge the dimensional merger. Only Jacob calls it the merger. Chris has confirmed that the conversations that Jacob posts are real. If Magichan were real, he would not have lied to Chris about this. Chris believes that he visited Jacob when he was possessing Magichan. Chris now realizes that Jacob was a troll, so why would he not have realized that when they met in person? The other CPU goddesses managed to catch Jacob in a lie, where he claimed that it would not be possible for Jacoba to possess him. Yet, his excuse for all of his bad behavior to Chris was always that Jacoba was possessing him. Why would Magichan not tell Chris that Jacob was lying? If COVID-19 exists to kill the weak for the merge, then surely it would actually be doing that. The death toll is surprisingly low compared to other plagues and even things like heart disease and car accidents. 
If COVID is extra-dimensional faded magic, surely humanity wouldn't have been able to significantly lower the death toll by social distancing, thus defeating the point. In Jacob's dialogues with Magichan, he makes it clear that Chris believes Jacoba to be Jacob's OC, and asks Jacob to kill Jacoba basically by writing him out of his story. Jacob has to make up a BS reason for this not to happen. If Chris thinks that Jacoba exists in C-197, that would mean that the merge happening would be more harmful to us than good because it would make him real in our dimension. Why is Jacoba a bigger threat to Earth than other alien empires in fiction? What happens to fictional characters who exist in multiple universes? Spider-Man has the Spider-Verse. Doctor Who has parallel universes. Pokemon games themselves are all parallel to each other. Why do characters who've met in crossovers pretend that they haven't met later? If Snake meets Mario in Super Smash Bros. Brawl, why don't the events of that game impact him in Metal Gear Solid 4? How do stories that treat time travel differently work if they exist together? Avengers Endgame directly states that the time travel in Back to the Future is wrong, so how can both Back to the Future and Endgame happen in the same universe? What about different depictions of God, like on Supernatural, or Xena, or The Simpsons? What about different depictions of God in, like, actual religions? How can the one God be different characters? What about fourth-wall-breaking stories that include fictional versions of real people? When an actor plays themselves in a movie, does that mean that the actor as themselves is a character in C-197? If a creator is in their own movie, do they also exist in, a, like, a dimension between ours and C-197, where they're fictional to us, but they're extra-fictional to that dimension? What about fiction within fiction, like Itchy and Scratchy? Do they live amongst the Simpsons, or are they another layer down from C-197? Chris believes that his Sonic 2 comics are real, so what about the retcons that happen in those? At first, he said that he was destined to be with Sarah Hammer, then Ivy, then said in the future he was married to someone named Lovely Weather in 2015. By the time that that future came around, Chris had transitioned to female, and he has never mentioned Lovely Weather since. You could chalk this up to time traveling changing the future, as Chris time travels in his comics, but he also states in his comics that the future cannot be changed from time travel. It's not a bold statement to say that Chris's dimensional merge stuff makes no sense, but what Proto Man is trying to do here is convince Chris that it makes no sense. Thank you for watching. I will continue to report on this story if there are any developments, if Chris responds to any of these, or if the document gets updated.